Greetings! You're listening to Technically a Conversation, a podcast where we share an interesting topic or story with each other and hope you find it interesting as well. I'm one half of your host, Jose, and I'm joined, as always, by my lovely co-host, Isela. How are you doing today? I am absolutely fantastic. How are you doing? Doing good also, thank you. Now, before we get started, just a quick reminder that sometime within the next week or so, we'll be doing a Lucifer finale recap show. If you're a fan of Lucifer like we are, send us your thoughts, your reactions, whatever's on your mind to greetingstac at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 915-317-6669. This will be a bonus episode that you'll get in addition to the regular weekly show. So if you want to hold on to it until you've had a chance to watch the show, you can, or if you don't care about the show, you can skip it. But it will probably be filled with spoilers, so you've been warned. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Yeah. So Isela, have you ever been afraid before? Many times, absolutely. What's one of your biggest fears? Something that keeps you up at night? Oh, um, during the summers, my daughter is not the strongest swimmer, but she can swim. But I always get afraid that like, I don't know, that she's going to go to someone's house who has a pool, which she does know people who have pools and kind of tire herself out in the deep end and then nobody sees her. And I don't know, like my, (laughs) my mind gets a little crazy with that. That one's like, yeah, that one's a real big fear for me. Well, that's a very rational fear. I feel like that's something that if I had kids, I would be afraid of as well. But do you have any irrational fears? Something that you know you shouldn't be afraid of, but you are. Oh, irrational fears? I don't really think so. I think everything is always based on, you know, fear of death, fear of... No, I don't... Is death irrational because everybody goes through it? Would that be considered irrational? No, I think that's a little rational fear. Oh, okay. That's rational. I, no, I mean, I'm not the person that has like weird, like fear of like parakeets or, I don't know, you know, like <laughs> something strange like that. Let me flip the question around a little just to get into your psyche a little bit. Is there something you feel most people are afraid of, but you're totally cool with? Irrationally speaking, I've heard a lot. Like my boyfriend is afraid of birds, like predatory birds. And I don't think I've ever had that experience. So I think that's, I I think you also have that same kind of fear, right? So I think like that's a little, I don't want to say silly, but I think that's strange because I don't have it. I don't share it. I have that same fear as well. So I feel like that's totally rational. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So you said, you've known me for a long time. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, you and I met at a gothic nightclub fighting over glow sticks. I believe you went dressed as Vampira that day with your two inch nails, micro waist with a pale white feline face, inclination, eyebrows to there. And don't forget the six inch high heels. What the heck? (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. That's where I tell everybody that I met you. That really explains all the crazy looks that I get from your family. (laughs) They're like, wow, what happened to her? She looks so normal now. (laughs) Well, what I was getting at is that, you know, that I have a lot of random thoughts. The other day I started wondering what some of the most unusual phobias were. So that's what I wanted to discuss with you today. This is going to be exciting. Before we get to the fun part, because this show is pretty much going to be all fun facts, let's start off by defining a few things so that we're all on the same page. So if I were to ask you, Isela, define the word phobia, what would your one sentence definition be? A fear of something, like a deep rooted fear in something. Mm, That's pretty close. According to a Healthline article titled Common and Unique Fears Explained, by Corrine O'Keefe Osborne, no relation to Ozzy Osborne, and medically reviewed by Dr. Timothy J. Leg, no relation to my leg, possibly related to your leg. <laughs> a phobia is an irrational fear of something that's unlikely to cause harm. The word itself comes from, from the Greek word phobos, which means fear or horror. Now, the thing that makes a phobia different from a regular fear is that phobias cause so much distress and anxiety to the people that suffer from them that they start to interfere with a person's life at home, work, or school. People that suffer from this experience an intense fear of a certain object or situation 
and will start limiting the things they do, the places they go, or social interactions. I see. So this is more, I guess when it becomes a problem is when they really start rearranging their life around this phobia. Exactly. It becomes a problem when it interferes with somebody's life. Now, the thing about phobias is that phobias are a type of anxiety disorder. It's estimated that 30% of American adults will suffer from some type of anxiety disorder at some point in their life. I suffer from anxiety. I live a very structured, routine life because fear of the unexpected gives me anxiety. Whenever I do something that I've never done before or go somewhere that I've never gone before, I get anxious. It's not crippling to the point where I completely avoid new things, but I definitely have to push myself through it. And oftentimes, I'll think twice before agreeing to do something. That's really interesting. Can I ask you, what was the last thing that you did for the first time that really shot up your anxiety? It wasn't necessarily what I did for the first time, but the last thing that got me like super anxious was actually this past weekend when we went to go see Star Wars. You know, it's just not knowing how many people were going to be allowed into the movie theater, not knowing if people were going to be wearing masks. Most of the time, I'll say no to going to anywhere downtown just because the, the parking gives me anxiety. Does that change if someone else is driving and now you just get to be the passenger? You know what? That's actually funny that you bring that up. It does change. Like when we took our, our trip to Dallas, right. I was totally cool with you driving because that took away so much anxiety from me. See, that's so cool. Now I know. All right. Good to know. <laughs> See, I'm learning you still. Now, even before the pandemic, another thing that gave me anxiety is crowds or being around a lot of people. The day that you and I met at that gothic nightclub, my anxiety was at 97%. <laughs> That's probably why I snapped at you for taking all the glow sticks. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, though, I'll avoid going to bars or restaurants with a lot of people. I'll make the effort if I'm around people I feel safe with, but if I'm meeting up with people I barely know, I probably won't go. Now with COVID, that's been magnified 57.216%. So very exact. I really appreciate your exactitude there. <laughs> well, you know that I always like to give percentages and give numbers because numbers are black and white. Yeah. Even my feelings like to describe them in numbers. Yeah. You cannot argue with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> now, according to the DSM-5 which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, also known as the Bible of Psychology and Psychiatry. Agoraphobia, which is a fear of places or situations that trigger fear or helplessness, is singled out as being one of the most common fears. So at least I feel a little more normal knowing that that's pretty common. Oh, that's really interesting. Wow. Okay. It's good to know. Do you want to take a guess at what the other phobia that, that is singled out by the DSM-5 is? Hint. It's the other one I also mentioned having earlier. The one about the birds? No. Sadly, that's not that common. So the barking? <laughs> no, I'm just going to say everything you said. <laughs> no, you're on the right track, though. It's social phobias or phobias related to social situations. I can see that, though. Because it's a lot of pressure, especially when you're invited to go. Because obviously, if you, it was your choice, you would stay home. So this means somebody invited you to go. And that means someone at least close to you invited you to go to actually make you want to give a shit enough to actually want to go. And then to think about the pressure of like everybody else that might be there. Do you know them? And how safe are they, especially in this COVID time? Oh, my God. Yeah, that could be really bad. And again, I, there's certain people that I feel safe around. So with those people are more apt to do things than people that I don't feel safe around. So just the fact that you and I have taken so many road trips and <laughs> have done so many cool things together ever since we met at that gothic nightclub, <laughs> uh, obviously I do feel safe around you. People are really going to think that we met at some <laughs> weird goth club. When the heck? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, I... I agree. I think you know my habits. I know your habits. So I think that's why it's easier for you to trust me because it's not like I'm out there being unsafe. God, that sounds like... <laughs> Does that sound like we're talking? Oh my God. It sounds so crazy. It sounds like we're talking about other stuff, but yeah, we're definitely talking about just interactions. Oh my God. Right now with COVID, I think most people know what we're talking about. Yes. 
So now that we know what phobias are and two of the most common phobias, let's get to the fun part. Right after we return from a quick commercial break. Did you like how I did that segue? I do. <laughs> <laughs> The Iceberg Lounge is Gotham's coolest new nightclub, offering the finest nightlife and dining experience. Whether you're looking to entertain your business associates or looking for a night out on the town, the Iceberg Lounge is truly an experience. Our restaurant offers you the most extravagant dishes cooked to perfection by some of the world's most renowned chefs. And our lounge features some of the best jazz bands in town, all housed in our 12,800 square foot, two-story club. The Iceberg Lounge is more than just food and music. It's a feast for all the senses. The pool and iceberg are located in the central dining area with live seals and penguins to enchant and delight you. And our bar has the finest wines and liquor to satisfy even the most refined and discriminating tastes. Come by for our early bird special free caviar with every meal before six. So how was your break, Isela? I was honestly just imagining what this iceberg club, I really got to get my ass there because wow. That should be our next road trip. It sounds dope as F. I'm totally down. And we get to see penguins. Hell yeah. Caviar. I don't know if I even like caviar to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Very excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> so did you suffer from any diaphemisticophobia during our break? Is that the fear of coming back to a non-working technology? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, diaphemisticophobia is a fear of commercials or advertisements. Oh my gosh, people are afraid of that. They could never watch TV <laughs> or listen to podcasts. Oh, their life would be awful. Well, the interesting part about this is that people that suffer from this phobia aren't afraid of all commercials, but will be afraid of a certain type of ad. For example, like an ad for a dentist or PSAs. So they're only afraid of, of a certain type of ad. That's really interesting. I don't know why it reminds me, but it reminds me of like, I used to really like Wizard of Oz until I watched the flying monkeys. And I was like, oh, no, I'm out. I don't care what happens. I don't care how cool this Emerald City looks. I don't want to see these weird ass flying monkeys. So maybe that's kind of like I'm OK with this, but totally not OK with that. Maybe. I mean, it would be more like um, maybe something like those commercials they show for the Humane Society, where they normally show dogs that are in pretty rough shape. That is sad. It's very sad. I don't really like watching those. I can't say that I'm scared of them, but I don't like watching them just because I don't like to see anybody, you know, even if it's animals, I don't like to see them suffer. Very understandable. So like I promised, we're going to do something fun now. Would you like to play a game? I am always <laughs> ready for the fun. <laughs> now, I really like the quiz that we did during our Urban Legends podcast, where I told you a legend and you told me if it was true or false. Now, I know that prior to today, you had never heard of phobias and you were unfamiliar with the concept, but I feel like you have a good understanding now that we've covered it in, in a little bit of detail. Yes. So I feel you're going to do well. Bring it. You folks at home are welcome to play along as well. So wake up grandma and the kids <laughs> and huddle around the cell phone. Let the warm, comforting glow of the AMOLED screen warm your bodies <laughs> and your hearts. And let's play Name That. Fear! <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Name That Fear, a technically a conversation, George Bettis and Marv Wolfman production. Today's contestant, coming to us all the way from El Paso, Texas, Isela! <laughs> wow, I I'm going to was... tell you the name of a phobia. And see if you can guess what the fear is. Jose, tell her what fabulous prize she'll be playing for. Since we're a mediocre and substandard podcast, you'll be playing for bragging rights. Because we can't afford to get you a real prize. You'll be asked five questions. 
and will have 30 seconds to come up with an answer. You win if you get three out of the five questions right. Spoiler alert, these are all kind of wacky, but by no means do I mean to disparage anyone that's suffering from one of these conditions. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh my god! I'm, I'm like so excited to play now. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> okay, so you're ready to play, Sela? Absolutely, bring it. Okay, so behind me, you'll see a countdown timer. I'm going to give you the name of a phobia, oh. and you'll have 30 seconds to come up with the answer. Okay. Keep in mind that this is an audio podcast, so no one at home can watch us. So if you want to discuss your ideas or thought process during that time, feel free to do so. If you need me to repeat the word, I'll be more than happy to. I'll give you little time warnings as the countdown timer starts ticking. Ready to play? A question. I can use my Google magic, right? No. <gasps> you, oh my God. You son of a puppy. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be keeping close watch of your hands to make sure Darn that it. you're not Googling the answer. Okay. What a fun will it be if you Google it? You'll find it in two seconds. I Well, now it's a question of how fast and accurate am I at typing. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, cool. Or how fast and accurate I am at pronouncing these, because some of these are kind of hard. Okay, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it is it uh, at least multiple choice? It is not. You want me to fail. Okay, I get it. <laughs> All right, I see how this is. <laughs> one of them is going to be very easy. I feel like you'll get that one right away. Okay, I'm excited. The others, they might be a little bit more difficult, but just remember, these are all super silly. Wow. Okay. Are you ready to play? I am ready. The first phobia is electorophobia. Electorophobia. Bro. Okay, if it's silly, can I throw out answers? And sure. you can tell me yes or no? Sure. Okay. 16 is, seconds. Is it the fear of bulls? No. The fear of people named Alex? No. Seven seconds. The fear of siblings? No. Two seconds. Fear of... I don't know. Your 30 seconds are up, Isela. Name that fear. I'm going to say the fear of cartoons. Is that your final answer? Sadly, yeah. <laughs> <gasps> it's actually the fear of chickens. Chicken! Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know what? I can kind of see that one because they are very erratic. One moment, they're just kind of like hanging out, pecking at the dirt. And then next thing you know, they like, they get all crazy and then they start running. And then they'll try to fly for like two steps. And so you're like, whoa, what the? <laughs> they're really erratic. I can kind of see that one. Okay. The second phobia is Anomatophobia. Anomatophobia. The, the fear of loud noises? No. 21 seconds. Oh my goodness. 11 teen seconds. Is it the fear of words? <laughs> You're pretty close. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> You're really close. Now Isela, name that fear. Something about the fear of words. Maybe the fear of specific words then. Can you be a little bit more specific than that? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, the, the fear, I mean, because I was thinking of onomatopoeia. So the fear of like onomatopoeia words, maybe. <laughs> You're on the right track. Oh, man. Okay. I need a final answer, Isela. I, I, don't, I don't really know. <laughs> it's a fear of names. Oh, na names? Names. That's really weird. <laughs> I told you these are all kind of wacky. And again, I'm sorry if anybody suffers from any of these, but... This is true. These are kind of wacky. In fact, I feel like we need to make a call out. If you have a fear of names or a fear of anything that we have called out to be irrational, I would really love to know where that is rooted from. 
That would be really great, actually. Tell us your story. We don't have to share it online. Or we don't have to mention your name. Right. But if you want to you know, share with us what the origin story of that fear was, I think that would help everybody to be a little bit more understanding. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Okay. Sorry. Next. Okay. So in order for you to win, Isela, you need to get these last three questions right. Mm. We'll still continue playing to the fifth one just because it'll be fun. <laughs> the third phobia is pogonophobia. Pogonophobia. 30 seconds. Is it the fear of jumping? No. Fear of exercising? No. 19 seconds. The fear of hearing no? No. I'm starting to get that one, whatever that one is. <laughs> 13 <laughs> seconds. Ah, uh, man, this is hard. Okay. Pogo Seven no. Seven seconds. I think I need to brush up on my Latin. Um, I don't know. The f fear of shoes. Is that your final answer? It's going to have to be right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, I know that you definitely do not have this fear. Right. Because it's the fear of beards. Oh. <gasps> I have a pretty spectacular one going on. It is pretty fabulous. <laughs> wow. So I really want to know people who are afraid of beards. <laughs> like, do they have to stand away from people or they just can't make friends with them? Or they just can't look at them? Wow. So many questions. <laughs> Sorry. And I wish I would have thought of all that uh, before you asked them or else, uh, you know, I would have been prepared. I'm way over analytical. Trust me. I would have found something. Ready for the fourth one? I am ready. The fourth phobia is nephophobia. Nephophobia. 30 seconds. Um, 25 seconds. Is it the fear of the dark? No. That's, that's not silly enough, right? Okay. The fear of... 17 dark seconds. Colored clothing? No. Oh, man. The fear of... Nine seconds. Is it like the fear of tires or something strange? No. Fear... Okay, first Two it was fear seconds. of boots. Fear of boots. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, that's not what I meant to say. What was that? Fear of boobs? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was going to say boots, and then and then we were talking about beards, so the D came into play, and I said boots instead. I don't know why. Okay, I was thinking, since we talked about beards, so maybe this is like the fear of, like, feet. It is not. Dang, I suck again. Oh, hold on, I forgot to make it official. <laughs> yes. I suck. It is the fear of clouds. Oh my god, they're so fluffy and beautiful. <laughs> Nephophobia is definitely the strangest one. I can understand beards. There's all kinds of weird things that hide in there. And oh, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like when they're really, really long, I feel like sometimes they could be really dirty and they hide like food particles or, you know, I feel like a broccoli stem is going to come out or something weird. I shampoo and condition my beard every day. Oh. So you won't have to worry about that. Very good to know. And usually when I eat, I always wash my beard too. Yeah, you get very, like, you get all up in there. You're like, I'm going to go wash my whole body. <laughs> I pretty much bathe in the sink when I, <laughs> after I finish eating. Like, why are your armpits wet, Jose? <laughs> oh, that food really made me work up a sweat. That's why. <laughs> oh, my God. You're like taking hobo bathrooms or whatever. <laughs> Just get... This next one, I know you're going to get it. You're going to get it right away. But at least give me a chance to uh, hit the little countdown timer. Yes. Because I love that little song. It is pretty cool. The fifth and final phobia is cryophobia. Cryophobia. 30 seconds. Is it the fear of being frozen? <gasps> See, Yay! I told you it was going to be easy. I got one. <laughs> I'm not dumb, you guys. <laughs> These were all super random, which was exactly what I was going for. I would not have guessed them either, so don't feel bad. Oh my God, those were, those were really interesting though. So how did you enjoy the game? Did you have fun? I did. I learned a tremendous amount. All right. So let's finish off this podcast with some real fun facts. The following are from an Aruma article called Surprising Facts About Phobias. No author was named. 
Now, did you know that it's not just peasants like you and I that suffer from phobias? Celebrities can have phobias too. Even well-known celebrities. Christina Ricci has a fear of indoor plants. This is called botanophobia. She says that touching a dirty house plant feels like torture to her. Plants aren't all dirty. I hope she knows that. That's so interesting. I hope she knows that, right? Like, how do I get in touch with her to talk to her about this? <laughs> mm, plants are pretty dirty. I always wash my hands whenever I touch a plant. That's so weird. Like, who's just feeling up plants, though? That's a good question. <laughs> I, I can't answer that. I was trying to think of something funny to say, but I was like, yeah. <laughs> it was a nice little stare down at the whole okay, cake girl for a second. I'm like, mm, okay. Alfred Hitchcock had a fear of eggs. This is called ovophobia. People that work for him claim that cracking an egg made him gag. He once told a reporter, and I quote, Have you ever seen anything more revolting than an egg yolk breaking and spilling its yellow liquid? Oh, wow. Okay, those two phobias, I probably would have been able to guess. I think my ego is like slightly hit, hurt right now. <laughs> Botanophobia, yeah, that's easy to remember. Ovo, like egg, yeah, that's also easy. Okay, well, let's see if you can guess the three fears of our next superstar. Okay. Johnny Depp, highly awarded actor, producer, musician, and alleged wife beater, has <laughs> not one, not two, but three phobias. So I'll tell you the three phobias he has and see if you can guess what they are. Okay. He has chlorophobia, arachnophobia, and phasmophobia. Okay, I have 33.33% of those. <laughs> Arachnophobia is the fear of spiders. Yes. Thanks to that movie. That movie, yeah. I would have been very disappointed in you had you not gotten that one right. Eesh, nice. The, <laughs> the pressure, I love it. <laughs> what about chlorophobia or phasmophobia? I don't know what either of those are. Chlorophobia is the fear of clowns and phasmophobia is the fear of ghosts. Like fantasmas. Exactly. See where Spanish comes in. I get the ghost thing. I mean, I don't think anybody really necessarily wants to encounter a ghost in their house. I do. You don't. You don't want to talk to one. That would be super weird if like things start moving and then all of a sudden you're like, who's it? You know that I'm a skeptic, but I love the paranormal. So I would love the opportunity to talk to a ghost, be abducted by aliens. Like that's my dream is being abducted by aliens. <laughs> You're so crazy. Encountering a chupacabra, anything <gasps> weird and paranormal. Right. I would love. Oh, that's so funny. So he's afraid of ghosts. And um, you said the other one was what? I'm sorry. Clowns. Well, he must have watched it or read <laughs> it. I started reading it when I was like in high school and I gave up because I was so freaked out. I was like, why am I continuing to torture myself? It was really scary. <laughs> I've always wanted to watch it or read it. I know my brother loves it, but I've never taken the time to read or watch it. Well, you have a lot of shows to get through. I do. I got two more fun facts. Did you know that phobias may be passed down in your DNA? Now, it sounds crazy, but some experts and researchers believe that a negative experience one of our ancestors had might be passed down to us. An example of this is glossophobia or the fear of public speaking. Even though someone may have never had a negative or traumatic experience while making a speech, if an ancestor of theirs was laughed off of the stage, it's possible this phobia could be passed down for generations to come. Oh my goodness. I've heard of, I think they call it something like familial trauma or I don't remember. It's, it's something to that effect where trauma for someone, if it's really impactful, then it can be passed on to, you know, generations to come to. So I wonder if that's kind of the same thing, or if it's like a phobia strong enough, then you're going to pass it on to, to your future kids. I feel that that's true. They've observed that in the animal kingdom, where animals will be afraid of snakes, even though they've never encountered a snake before. But it's just one of those passed down fears. That's interesting. I feel like there has to be a conversation to be had, like, okay, Beware of these, but not of these. You know what I mean? Maybe that might be something that you might be able to research and uh, bring up as a, as a future topic. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> how, do, how do animals communicate? Or can fears be passed down? Yes, that would be a cool one. Last fun fact here. Fun fact here. Phobias can be treated, 
We didn't really go into treatment in this podcast because there are almost as many treatments as there are phobias. And I really kind of wanted to focus on a few of the most common and most unusual phobias. But depending on the type of phobia that you have, a common treatment option might be exposure therapy. With exposure therapy, you're presented with your phobia little by little. While you might not become completely desensitized to the object of your nightmares and your fears, over time you'll become more comfortable. In the case of an insect phobia or entomophobia, you might start by just thinking about an insect. Once you're comfortable with that, you'll be presented with a picture of an insect. After you become comfortable with that, they'll bring an insect into the same room with you. And over time, you'll possibly even be holding a live insect in your hand. I've seen when people go through the exposure therapy for the fear of snakes, whatever that is, and then they make them like get close to it and closer and closer and closer. And then like they get through these breakthrough sessions where they have to like at least touch it and they cry. These people cry. It's really sad. Like it looks torturous. I don't know about that exposure therapy. That seems that seems a little rough. Yeah, like I could never do something like Fear Factory or Fear Factor or whatever that show was called. <laughs> yes. I would start crying. I would be like the first one to start crying the moment they made me <laughs> eat a bug or something disgusting. I could never do it. It was more like truth or dare. It was like the biggest truth or dare ever. Everybody was eating like cockroach or they were being poured mm. cockroaches all over their... F oh, God, no. Like, no, 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 no. I don't care how much money you can throw at me. I don't. No, I don't want that at all. No, the worst part is if you get one that's juicy, like you bite into it, it's all... Nicolas Cage ate one for one of those, his movies. I don't remember what, but it was crawling across the floor and you see him like on his hands and knees and then he grabs it. And then he, he, I was like, oh my God, that looked so real. I was like, please tell me that was CGI. And he was like, yeah, it kind of tastes like chicken. Of course, like, oh. I know. I was like, guacatela. Not like even those people that, that eat those crickets that are in the candy. Mm -mm. No, I can't do it. There's been so many people that ate them and I think they're fine. They lived to tell the tale. Grasshoppers is maybe where I like draw the line. I don't think chocolate covered crickets would be too awful, but I, I think I would still want to take off their legs because I don't. Oh God, I don't know. No, things are getting real. Never mind. I don't think I would. Want that. What about their wings? What if they're nice and crispy? Oh no! Oh my God! <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? Do you remember watching Three Amigos? I haven't watched it in a while, so I don't know it word for word. Don't worry, I got you. There's this. <laughs> There's a scene where they all fall asleep in the desert and one of them's like afraid and the other two are like just chit-chatting it up or whatever, but they're making dinner and one of them's cooking like bats and he's like, oh, do you want your wings? And he's like, no, 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 go ahead. Yeah, you might take my bat wings. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> okay, so now that we've covered this topic in a little bit of detail, do you think you're ready to start tackling your althiophobia? I don't know what that is. Your fear of marshmallows, of course. Oh, they're so beautiful and cute. <laughs> I like to write on them with little, like, edible markers, make little faces. <laughs> okay, so I think you've conquered your althiophobia. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready to eat, eat their faces. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so on that high note, we hope that you enjoyed the show and you join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show, leave us a review. Tell a friend and subscribe wherever fine podcasts are sold. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at GreetingsTAC. Email us at GreetingsTAC at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 915-317-6669. If you have a story to share with us. Or a phobia to share with us. <laughs>